Hi, my name is Robert Weiss and I've been a ceramicist for over 50 years. Thanks for joining me today as we discuss the scientific process of how crystals form on your pottery. When we reach code 9, the glaze is flowing pretty well at that point. You have zinc and silica in the formulation that are positively and negatively charged. They find one another and form a covalent bond which becomes the nucleus of the first crystal. While we're holding the temperature, we want to make sure that it doesn't fluctuate. And the reason for that is if it goes up too high or spikes down too low, it actually changes the color of the crystal. So for later on, you can experiment with that, but for now, I really want to have the firing be successful for you. So holding the temperature is not a problem with the right kind of controller, and almost every kiln that I've ever worked with, both gas and electric, that has a controller on it, it has no problem holding the temperature at that state. Across the spectrum, crystalline glazes have different melting points. Mine are all formulated to melt at cone 9. I think the importance in that is that you could get a glaze off the internet and attempt to fire it, but you may have trouble actually growing crystals. It's imperative that you know not only what the top temperature is and when that glaze is flowing, but also whether or not you're going to get crystals at what temperature. It's, it's important that you know that prior to even starting your venture in an attempt to grow crystals. Every kiln fires differently. That's why I always put in cone pads. If I'm firing to cone 9, in this case, I put in 8, 9, and 10. When cone 8 starts bending, I pay real attention so that I can get cone 9 to bend just perfectly. The difference between cones and temperature is that while you might find on a chart 2300 degrees is cone 9. Well, if you look at the chart, it's going to say over X amount of hours at a certain temperature. That isn't so with cones. With cones, what happens is it's temperature and time. So the cone absorbs the temperature over a period of time and then melts exactly like the glaze does. It's very critical that you allow the cone to bend to nine and your glaze at the same time is now molten and flowing down the piece. When I first started formulating for crystalline glazes back in 1967, I was firing in a gas kiln. There were no controllers. There was no way to figure out what kind of temperature you had and, until it was already past it, going up or going down. And a gas kiln wants to, tends to reduce a little bit, and I know that zinc will explode when it's reduced. So what I did was I took every piece that I made, I threw a sagger that goes over the entire piece to keep it in a neutral or oxidizing atmosphere. I fire in both electric and gas kilns. With the controllers that you get today on both electric and gas, you have way more control over holding temperatures, rising temperatures, etc. The most important part in your job in, in firing is to watch for that cone 9 to go down. Because you know at cone 9, the glazes are melting real critical that you're there at that time. After that time, it's really a matter of the kiln holding it for X amount of hours and going down and coming back up if we're growing growth rings, etc. So, like I said before, critical that you know what the heat work is on your glaze and the only way you're going to tell that is by having cone 9 go down. I want to say one more thing and that is, is that in an electric kiln even though it seems to be working just fine, 2310 every time a cone 9 goes down, someone turns on the electric dryer, someone is welding in a shop, and your amperage drops. So it changes.
just be aware of that. Because I have a lot of valuable pieces in a firing, in any firing, I tend to stick around for the rest of the firing after it drops and it's holding and it's going up and down, etc. cetera, uh, simply because in case something goes wrong, I want to be there. Only had a few incidences in many, many years that something did go wrong, but I like to be around, so it's a good time to trim my pots or throw a bunch of catchers or whatever I'm going to do. So I advise that you stick near your kiln. Once we have grown the initial crystal over four to six hours, we then drop the temperature down to an area that changes the color of the crystal. The crystal still continues to grow, but at a different rate and as a result, a different color. I hold it there for eight to 10 minutes. Then I bring it back up to our original crystal growing temperature and hold it there again for eight to 10 minutes. I have done as many as 10 up and downs to get five growth rings around my initial crystal. Now a word of caution. Please be careful when you're looking inside the kiln. Use either welder's goggles or UV protected sunglasses. The radiation that comes out is intense and can hurt your vision. The profits from your purchases of these crystal and glazes all go to the Weiss Family Fine Arts Scholarship Fund, where since 2003, we've given away 74 scholarships to students going on to pursue their passion in the arts. Thanks for supporting the arts and your interest in my crystalline glazes.